Welcome to Ask the Lawyer radio podcast with attorney Brian Figaro of the law firm Figaro and Associates. This podcast features a recording of our most recent radio show. We hope you enjoy the show, which features news, views, and interviews on matters such as immigration, personal injury, bankruptcy, divorce, family law, estate planning, wills and probate, deed transfers, civil rights, criminal defense, workers' compensation, and taxes, both individual and business. You can contact us at 855-768-8845 or visit us at www.askthelawyer.us. You have questions? We've got the answers. Our weekly immigration news roundup is brought to you by the law firm of Figueroa and Associates. For a consultation on any immigration or legal matter, please call 855-768-8845. That's 855-768-8845. For full stories and more immigration news, visit www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. That's www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. Hello, my name is Mary Campbell, legal assistant at the law firm of Figaro and Associates and your presenter with this week's immigration news. President Biden's Keeping Families Together program has begun. On June 18, the Biden administration announced two major new policies which may help provide streamlined paths to legal status for certain longtime undocumented immigrants. The first policy will allow undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens who have been in the country to apply for parole in place, a protection against deportation, which will also allow many to access an easier path to permanent resident status. The second policy will allow individuals with DACA and undocumented immigrants who have graduated college to apply for certain employment-based and immigrant visas more easily. Individuals who are married to U.S. citizens are generally eligible to obtain permanent resident status if their spouse applies on their behalf. However, for individuals who are in the country already following an unlawful entry, the process can be more complicated. They are generally required to leave the country to get permanent resident status and risk the possibility of being barred from re-entering for years, possibly permanently. The Biden administration's action will let most people in this situation apply for green cards without ever leaving the country and facing the possibility of separation. The White House estimates that at least 500,000 undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens may qualify for this status, as well as 50,000 set children of U.S. citizens. Applications are now open. Republican-led states sue to block DACA recipients from accessing affordable health insurance. A group of Republican-led states, headed by Kansas Attorney General Chris Kobach, have sued to block a new rule that allows deferred action for childhood arrival, DACA, recipients to access health insurance through the Affordable Care Act, ACA. It is yet another legal assault on DREAMers, while the fate of DACA itself hangs in the balance. What Project 2025 says about immigration? What would a second Donald Trump presidency mean for immigrants? The Project 2025 Mandate for Leadership document is a comprehensive plan of attack for an ultra-conservative federal government. It has become an object of mockery among Democrats, but also a source of fear and rage over what might happen if its authors were to come to power. The immigration agenda, in particular, is a carefully considered wish list for remaking federal immigration policy to suit the dreams of the most hawkish restrictionist, with a clear plan to restrict legal immigration of all kinds, while laying the foundations for a potential campaign of mass deportation. Meanwhile, in New York, Queens woman Wendella Sanderson Wells indicted an immigration scam, victims of Caribbean descent. $425,000 seized from home along with thousands of applications. Homeland Security Investigations New York, HSA, Special Agent in Charge Ivan J. Arvello said, As alleged, Wendella Sanderson Wells posed as an attorney and targeted a growing number of Caribbean victims, whom she deceived into paying thousands of dollars for services that were never rendered as promised. The defendant is accused of joining a growing population of criminals committing what has been dubbed a dream scam. She allegedly preyed upon individuals who were seeking to legitimately undergo the immigration process and in turn exploited their pursuits of the American dream. 
ACSI New York's Document and Benefit Fraud Task Force is unwavering in its dedication to protecting all New Yorkers, especially the most vulnerable. District Attorney Clark said, The defendant allegedly preyed upon vulnerable members of our undocumented community, men and women who were simply seeking to legally work and provide for their families. The defendant's alleged exploitation turned their American dreams into a nightmare. Brooklyn DA hits former parks worker with hate crime charge in migrant killing. The Brooklyn District Attorney has upgraded the charges against a former city parks worker accused of fatally shooting a homeless Venezuelan man, now alleging the killing was motivated by a hate for migrants. Elijah Mitchell, a seasonal Parks Department employee, is accused of targeting 30-year-old Arturo Cos Rodriguez Marcano on July 21, three days after angrily confronting migrants living in Steuben Playground and ripping tarps from where the homeless men had been sleeping so he could clean the park. This defendant allegedly came to the location where the victim was staying, armed with a gun, to settle a score, said Brooklyn District Attorney Eric Gonzalez in a statement after Mitchell's arraignment on second-degree murder as a hate crime and other charges charges on Wednesday. This premeditated and cold-blooded homicide is outrageous on many levels, not least because the alleged motive was hatred towards new arrivals to our city. State greenlights NYC evicting more migrant families from shelters. New York state officials have granted New York City permission to begin evicting many of the roughly 30,000 migrant parents and children living in Department of Homeless Services shelters. State officials confirmed Tuesday. Anthony Farmer, a spokesperson for the state's Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance, said the state has granted the city permission to begin issuing 60-day eviction notices to any family not receiving public assistance. OTDA didn't say how many families with children are not receiving public assistance and thus will be subject to the new rules. The majority of migrant families live in roughly 150 shelters overseen by the Department of Homeless Services that operate under OTDA regulations, bearing them until now from the 60-day limit on shelter stays that took effect in January. In other news, misclassification of foreign farm workers triggers labor agency investigation. Companies applying for temporary work visas have been misrepresenting job duties to the federal government, falsely limiting them to farm work. The U.S. Labor Department, equipped with enhanced enforcement tools from a 2023 overhaul of wage regulations, is now targeting instances of worker misclassification within the H-2, a temporary visa program for seasonal farm workers. These misclassifications could involve workers being underpaid or performing tasks that don't meet the agricultural visa requirements. Worker advocates are raising alarms about the rise in misclassification as visa use surges. They argue that such abuses not only lead to lost wages, but also create safety hazards for foreign workers and deprive American workers of job opportunities. And finally, according to Global Refuge U.S. citizens overwhelmingly convicted for smuggling fentanyl, in 2022, U.S. citizens made up 89% of convicted fentanyl drug traffickers, 12 times greater than convictions of illegal immigrants for the same offense. Thank you. Our weekly immigration news roundup is brought to you by the law firm of Figaro and Associates. For a consultation on any immigration or legal matter, please call 855-768-8845. That's 855-768-8845. For full stories and more immigration news, visit www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. That's www.theimmigrantsjournal.com. Do you have a legal issue, question, or concern? Turn to Ask the Lawyer. You have questions? We've got answers. For a consultation or to refer a client, visit www.askthelawyer.us. Again, www.askthelawyer.us. You can also register for our paralegal program, get legal news, business consults, or other information on educational issues. Yes, ask the lawyer. You have questions? We've got answers. For a consultation or to refer a client, visit www.askthelawyer.us. Again, www.askthelawyer.us.